We are back in the truck and driving for day 23. Day 23 of 30 days of ham radio. Yesterday we talked about some 220 repeaters and it was disappointing that I wasn't able to reach anybody. But that's something I'm gonna be focusing on a little bit more for future videos, so you guys stay tuned for that. Today we're driving up and we're gonna meet a gentleman who invited me out to his house a few weeks ago. This was before he knew about my 30 days of ham radio. He had emailed me and asked if I ever did anything with microwave. He asked me if I owned an ICOM IC905. My answer is no, I don't own one. And he said, um, and I told him, I said, no, I've never done anything with microwave. I've studied it a little bit. I've read about it. I've never actually done a microwave transmission and I do not own an IC905. And he said, well, let's change that. Why don't you come out to the house and I'll show you through this, through my microwave setup and we can do some transmissions and whatnot. And then I replied back to him right about the time, this was, this was last month sometime that he first emailed me. And then I replied back to him right about the time I started this 30 day challenge. And I'm like, hey, what if we do this as one day of my 30 days of ham radio? And he's like, great, that is great, let's do that. So we are headed out today to his home QTH that he invited me to. We're gonna set up an IC905. And I believe that uh, he borrowed a second radio from a friend of his. I'll try to look up his call sign real quick. WA6MDI is the gentleman we're speaking of right now. Now, I spoke to him. He was one of the stations on the air during my two meter sideband event when we joined the Chaos Net. We were looking for the Sidewinder on two net, which was about a week ago at the time of this recording. And he was one of the person, he was the first person to come back to me. And he's like, oh, I didn't know you had two meter sideband. I was like, yeah, I'm on my uh, 9700. We talked a little bit and of course made that video. So he's out there on, and I don't know if he was on his IC905 at the time or not, but we're gonna go out here and, and do some microwave work. As I said, he borrowed a, um, he's borrowed a second radio from a friend, so he's gonna drive down the road and we're gonna make a microwave. I think he said on 10 gigahertz, we're gonna make a 10 gigahertz phone contact. I'm gonna be on his radio. He's gonna be on his friend's radio. We're gonna do a walkthrough and just kind of look at everything. So let's go, 30 days of ham radio. Thanks for joining. Yeah, what I wanted to do, I've been through the trains, I've been through the sailboats, been through the airplanes, obviously. I did that professionally. Mm -hmm. yep. So the next thing was the ham radio. So what I wanted to do was to be able to get on 160 through 1296 from the house. So I put a closed loop antenna up, mm -hmm. it covers 160 through six, mm -hmm. and that, I covered that with an ICOM 7300 and a little ALS 600 over here. I got the uh, 9700, that covers two meters, 432, mm -hmm. 1296. Missing was 902 and 1290, or 220. Right. So I got two transverters. This one is 902, it's 25 watts. This is uh, 220, it's 100 watts, both from Q5. They come down and go into the uh, go into the 7100 ICOM. So something in. I have not seen before is you're telling me that that's both a transverter and an amplifier. No, it, what, it's, it takes 10 watts in uh -huh. on, 10 meter, on 10 meters. Okay. And the power output in this one is 25 watts and this one's 100 watts. It's a transverter with an amplifier with an built, amp built into it. I've not seen that. If you look on the Q5 products out of Florida, uh -huh. that's where that comes from. Okay. He does an excellent job. See, originally the, the background on that, as I understand it, was that Down East Microwave mm -hmm. and uh, Q5, apparently they decided to uh, spin off the lower frequency stuff up through 1296. So Q5 products handles everything up through 1296, mm -hmm. and then Down East Microwave does everything up to, what is it, 47 gig is, the, is how high they go. Okay. That makes any sense. Yeah, sure, yeah, totally. So, but now the rest of the gear, now what we've got going on is an ICOM 905. Now what happens with this, this control head looks very similar to the 705. Yes. And what they do is I've got 12 volts going to that and the output goes through a uh, CAT6 cable. I think you were on, what was it, with Ray Novak and he mentioned something about the fact that it's power over ethernet. Yes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That goes into an RF deck this little guy right here. Mm -hmm. Now, all of that is handled remotely into this RF deck, which is uh, two meters, 432 and 1296. That is 10 watts. Then it has uh, 2.4 gigahertz and 5.7. And that is two and a half watts in each one of those bands. This antenna 
is an M squared antenna. It's basically a Yagi in a can on uh, 2.4. Okay. Over on the back side over here is the transverter that comes from ICOM. That takes 10 gigahertz, which is fed in off this antenna. Directive systems. Yes. That's a dual feed antenna for 10 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. So what happens is that they put out 2.5 watts on 2.4 and 5.7, and then a half watt on 10 gigahertz. And that has a dual feed horn. Now I've got that set up where it's over horizontal. On top of this is one of the M squared loops for two meters and also for 432. And that's the output being fed off of the uh, back of the ICOM box here. And so what'll happen is that I'm, when I'm on a hilltop with this thing, I can actually take and uh, operate everything from two meters through 1296 off those two antennas because the 432 rig also loads up on 1296. Mm -hmm. And then uh, five, what is it? Yeah, 5.7 and 10 gigahertz and 2.4 out the back end of it. You call that one semi-portable. Semi-portable, yeah. What I've got to do, I've got to, I can disconnect the piece of PVC that's on the side here mm -hmm. facing us. Mm -hmm. That gets off. I take the uh, directive systems dish off mm -hmm. and I can throw it in the back of the truck. This one is much lighter. Yeah. Now this is fed into the ICOM 705. This is the ICOM dish. And what it has on the back end is a down east microwave transverter. It comes in on 10 gigahertz and goes out on two meters. 10 watts input, and it uses the IF at 144. On the top of this up here, they use a 10 megahertz reference source. Mm -hmm. That is a Leo Bodner reference source, which has input to the 10 gigahertz box. Mm -hmm. to the transverter and what that does it gives us an extremely stable signal additionally there's a little push to talk circuit back here because this transverter pulls 65 milliamps mm -hmm. and the 705 can only handle uh, 50 milliamps so I've got that little interface in it so you hear when I when I click it you'll hear a click this is this is more portable than the than the other one obviously yeah, yeah. it does a pretty good job this is the ICOM antenna and I've got it configured for horizontal configuration, which is what we use here in Texas. There's a group called the North Texas Microwave Society. Mm -hmm. And uh, what they do is first uh, Saturday of every month, we have a uh, MAD or Microwave Activity Day. And a bunch of guys go running around the countryside at either portable operators. I gravitate to the hill over here in Roanoke. And I've got a little site up there next to the water tower that I get up there and get on the air. Most of your microwave contacts, at least here in North Texas, A, are horizontal and B, it's done on CW. And what they do, they exchange calls, grid square, and signal report. Okay. And uh, it's pretty interesting. Is it always on 10 gigahertz? No, um, okay. I can, you know, I can do 2.4, 5.7, mm -hmm. and 10. Some of the guys are playing around with two, uh, 24 gigahertz now, and they also go up to, uh, what is it, 48, 48, 47 or 48. Yeah. I didn't even know we had a ham band up there. Yeah, I think we got some higher than that. Uh, I, I know we do. I, there was a microwave update conference that took place in North Texas here like four, five, six years ago. And yes, I, sir. I attended that. Did you? And uh, recorded a bunch of sessions with those guys. Some of the stuff those guys are doing is just crazy. Yeah, <laughs> but, well, they, it, it gets expensive. And a lot yeah. of times, up until this 905 came out, right. you, had to be a, you had to be a machinist and also a home brewer. What are we gonna, we're going to do some co contacts, right? Uh, let, yeah, go ahead. And, you want to keep that thing going? or What I can do... Let me get a glass of water. We, sure. can, we can package this thing up, throw okay. it in the back of the truck, take it over to the park, okay. set it up, and then you can come back over here and I'll show you how to run this thing. Quarter mile from my house, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a call, and uh -huh. I'm going to have you go over to my place and let you hear the other end of it. Okay. 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 Uh, KC5HWB from WA6MDI, portable and trophy club on 10 gigahertz. Over, over. All right, do that one more time. I'm going to set the microphone. I'm going to set the microphone next to the amp that I heard click. Five. Okay. There we go. All right. Perfect. Okay. So you want me to walk back over there? Yeah. Can you? Okay. Yeah. Just sure. Pound on, yeah. Just pound on the door. Katie knows you're coming. Okay. KC5 HWB. You hear me fine? Yes. Okay. All right. Go ahead and come back to me. Sure. Okay. KC5 How does that sound? That sounds just fine to me. KC5 HWB. Okay. We'll keep the phone line open. But uh, let's just have a contact on, on 10 gig, okay? Yeah, yeah, sounds good. It, uh, it sounds sounds really clear. Fantastic. 5 8 from WA6MDI, operating portable in the park. 
about a uh, decent quarter mile away, something like that. And uh, you're five and nine. That'll go by 13, Julian Alpha. Over, over. Okay, also uh, also five and nine, and uh, Echo Mike thirteen as well. Uh, Juliet Alpha, what's that? That's the last two. That's the last two grids of the grid square. Ah. Look on the uh, well. I'll show you on the radio. It, it, it actually gives you your grid square it, it, on the printout or on the screen of the uh, nine oh five, and also on the seven oh five. I'll show you when I get back over there. Okay, okay. I was uh, yeah. I, I was thinking in four digit four digit grid square terms and. Uh, I thought Juliet Alpha was something else you were talking about. But yeah, I know what you mean. Okay, good. Yeah, I, I don't see it on the screen, so it'd be nice to know where that is as well. Okay, yeah, it's, it's in the menu in there, and I will be glad to show that to you when I get done. Okay, you got all you need for the video? Yeah, I think we are good. This is uh, this is great. I really like uh, watching the screen uh, come through at 10 gigahertz. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> what happens is that uh, I'm going to I'm gonna, uh, shut down and head back your way. You just stay there. Stay in the shade, and I'm going to shut this thing down and head back. Okay, sounds good. Uh, KC5HWB, thank you. You should be hearing the beacon on two meters. 279? Yeah. 280. All right, now let's try uh, 902. Okay. And that would be flipping the switch here. Uh huh. This one and the 1296 one are keyed together. Ah. Oh. So that's 902.059? 903.059. 903.059. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. That's a 1296 beacon. Gotcha. That is isn't works in conjunction with this. Oh, now it's in stereo. <laughs> okay. Nice. It's got a little bit of a warble. Those, these are yeah. all located in the uh, tower up at the Texas Women's University up in Roanoke. Gotcha. Or not, up, gotcha. up in Denton. Up in Denton, yeah. 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 Are, they, are, are they owned and operated by the Denton Club? Uh, and TMS. And, oh, okay. Oh, it's their stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that was fun. That was an enjoyable day of ham radio. Those last, that last little blurb there where he was showing me the two meters and 432 beacons, he was, we were talking about uh, some microwave stuff in that North Texas Microwave Society. He, he said um, they run beacons on the VHF and UHF bands so that you can basically, the band being up doesn't work the same way in VHF, UHF as it does in HF, but you know, you can, you can tune your station and point it towards the beacon in Denton if you're in the area, and you can monitor it and make sure everything's hearing correctly and that kind of thing. So it's it's always good to, to check propagation and check um, just overall general setup if your receive signal is working the way it should. So special shout out to Dick Melcher, WA6MDI. He's the one whose house we were at today. That was a fun time. Never had the opportunity to work any... 2.4 or 5 gigahertz voice transmissions, let alone 10 gigahertz. So working 10 gigahertz today was really cool. So thanks, uh, thanks again, North Texas Microwave Society. I'll uh, I'll find a link to their uh, website in the and I'll put it in the description below as well. And uh, probably going to be doing some stuff with them. He said the first Saturday they get together every month, so might try to do some stuff with them in the next coming months and just do some more videos about that aspect of amateur radio that I have done very little with myself. So. That was really good, and I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let's read some donations real quick. Okay, ending today with donations. We are up to $4,805 for a total of 89 donors. After this much time and this many views on this many videos, I kind of thought we'd have more than 89 donors. Maybe some of you guys are waiting to the last minute. I don't mean to sound ungrateful, but I was really kind of hoping to get a bigger number going by this far into the series. We're more than two-thirds of the way into the series right now, and I was obviously set a goal for $30,000. We haven't even gotten a third of the way there. 
So again, we're going to do a live stream at the end of this, probably the first Sunday of October. We're going to do a live stream. We're going to do a recap. We're going to talk to this. I'm going to try to get Steve K5ATA on there. We're going to do a thing. So if some of you are waiting to the last minute, then okay, no problem with that. And again, I don't mean to sound ungrateful. I just was hoping, I was hoping to raise more money for the Teachers Institute. Doesn't have anything to do with me or my numbers. Has to do with the Teachers Institute. But we had four new donors yesterday and raised a total of $175 just yesterday. Again, these donors are as of last night. And the only note was in memory of Marvin and Juanita McCullough from 2022. So thank you for those donations. Go to awrl.org forward slash 30 days to make further donations to the AWRL Teachers Institute. And we'll see you guys tomorrow.